Hello, and thank you for joining this informational webinar for families concerning Tennessee's Education Savings Account Program, or ESA. My name is Joshua Danner, and I'm a fiscal coordinator for the ESA program. The Tennessee Department of Education's Best for All strategic plan includes a focus on academics, student readiness, and educators. In this webinar, we will cover ESA allocation amounts for the 23-24 school year, contracts, eligible expenses, the ESA funds pre-approval process, the withdrawal process for ESA students, electronic wallet and disbursement information, and other additional helpful resources. ESA allocations are bound by state statute and state board of education rule. Tennessee Code Annotated and State Board of Education rules guide all parts of the ESA program. As such, the rules you will learn about are not determined by the Tennessee Department of Education, but are bound by what has been written in these two important documents. ESA allocations are determined by whichever amount of the two listed is less. The first amount is determined by the TISA funding formula based on the student's residence. The second amount is determined by the state per pupil average of required state and local funds. For the 2023-24 school year, eligible students must be zoned to attend a Memphis Shelby County District School, a Metro Nashville Public School, a Hamilton County Public School, or a school in the Achievement School District on May 24, 2019. Families must also meet income eligibility requirements ESA funds can be used for specific educational expenses at participating or non-participating Category 1, 2, and 3 non-public schools. However, expenses at non-participating schools cannot include tuition, textbooks, or uniforms. For the 2023-24 school year, the total ESA awarded amount for Memphis and Nashville students is $8,883, and for Hamilton County, ESA students, the amount is $8,756. The two amounts are different due to one being the state average and one being the local average. Based on State Board of Education Rule 0520-01-16-0.04, the allocation must be the lower of the two averages in which the student resides. Please note that the amount of an ESA will change yearly as the amount is reviewed and determined annually according to the TISA funding formula. It is important to note that ESA account holder contracts and school contracts are separate. I will discuss these differences in detail in the next few slides. Any contract the family signs with a school is the responsibility of the parties represented in the agreement. Families should read the terms of the contract carefully to ensure they understand all parts of the contract. Families should understand refunds and payment schedules before signing the contract. It is the responsibility of the family to ensure that the terms of the contract are fulfilled. In some schools, ESA funds may not pay for the entire cost of tuition. Account holders are responsible for ensuring the account is paid in full. The ESA program and the Tennessee Department of Education are not parties in the school family contract and cannot void a private contract, give legal advice, or arrange payment schedules. Families should expect to receive their contract with their final approval email. The contractual term of the ESA program runs from July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024. Account holders must sign the ESA program contract to receive the ESA funds. If the department determines that an account holder and or school have violated the terms of the contract or failed to comply with the requirements set forth in the Act, the Rule, or the ESA account holder school handbook, the department is authorized to suspend or terminate the ESA. While schools will partner with the ESA program, our contracts are different and unique to our program. The contract that you sign with your child's school is completely separate from your ESA contract. This is unique to the school that you have chosen to attend 
and will include aspects such as a tuition that might be higher than the amount of your ESA that are different from those outlined in your ESA contract. It is important to make sure that you understand all aspects of the contract before you sign it. While schools will partner with the ESA program, our contracts are different and unique to our program. Account holders responsibilities can be found in the family handbook on the ESA website at www.tn.gov slash education slash ESA. An account holder is the parent or legal guardian or student who has reached the age of 18. The account holder is responsible for signing the ESA program contract and is responsible for complying with the requirements of the ESA program. For a student account to be established and funds to be available, the department must have proof of student enrollment at a category one, two, or three non-public school. Approved students should share a copy of their ESA approval letter with their chosen school. Schools must send proof of enrollment to the department at esa.questions at tn.gov for ESA account establishment as soon as possible. Schools may begin sending proof of enrollment as soon as families receive ESA approval. In many cases, this is a signed enrollment contract. Schools are aware of this requirement and will help families through the process. ESA funds must be used yearly on approved expenses to benefit the education of the ESA student. Please note that unused funds are transferred to the account holder's balance for the following year after the family has met all eligibility requirements. Now we will look at eligible expenses and how to utilize your ESA funds. You must complete the ESA funds pre-approval form using the link that will be emailed to you by the ESA team. You can also use the funds pre-approval guidance form that will also be emailed to you to assist you in completing this form. All ESA funds must be pre-approved before spending. If you have trouble filling out the pre-approval form, or determining how to spend your funds, you can also reach out to an ESA fiscal coordinator. The ESA website has several helpful links to guide you through the pre-approval process. You can access the website at www.tn.gov slash education slash ESA. These links show different forms of guidance through the pre-approval process. The pre-approval guidance form and the pre-approval form will be emailed to account holders. It is important to check your email regularly. A finance pre-approval worksheet is also available in Appendix D of the ESA Family Handbook, also available on the ESA website. Parents will work with the ESA Finance team and school to determine eligible expenses and submit a pre-approval form for every student. On this slide, you will find the list of allowable uses for the ESA funds. Please note, account holders determine how money is expended. We encourage the parents and schools to work together and communicate regarding the student's fees, awarded financial aid amounts, and school tuition. ESA funds can be used for the following expenses. Tuition, required school uniforms, required school textbooks, computer hardware or technological devices required by the participating school, approved summer educational programs and after school education, tutoring services, educational therapies or services, approved transportation by a participating school, fees for early post-secondary or after the completion of high school, opportunity courses, exams or exams related to college admission, and textbooks required by an eligible post-secondary institution. The list of allowable fees is also located in the Family Handbook located on the ESA website. Some schools may consider ESA amounts when determining additional financial aid they offer to a child. Please confer with your school to understand what you will be required to pay that is not covered by the ESA. School enrollment fees, registration fees, and or application fees are not an allowable use of ESA funds. The list of allowable fees is also located in the Family Handbook located on the ESA website.
Students enrolled in category one, two, or three schools that are not participating in the ESA program can use funds for all expenses except tuition, uniforms, and textbook fees. This list of allowable fees is located in the Family Handbook on the ESA website. Now we will look at the pre-approval process steps, which are to be completed by the account holders and followed by participating schools. The ESA pre-approval process is as follows. Step one. First, the ESA team must receive enrollment verification from the school that includes the school fees. Step two. Next, the ESA team will email the account holder a link to the ESA contract. The contract must be signed and submitted by the account holder before moving forward with the ESA. <clears throat> Please note that this is to be completed by the parent and not the school. Step three, the ESA team will email the account holder a link to the expense pre-approval form that must be completed and submitted. The email will also include the ESA amount and any rollover funds from the previous year. Step four, the ESA team will review all expenses pre-approval forms within 10 business days from parent submission. Once approved, the account holder will receive a final approval email. Please note that the account holder determines how they want to expend their funds, not the school. We encourage the school and parents to communicate regularly regarding overall expenses, other financial aid award amounts, and ESA funds for each student. Pre-approved expenses will be shared with schools by the department. Once a parent has been approved, parents can expend the funds. If you have any questions about this process, please contact me, Joshua Danner, at joshua.danner at tn.gov or call 629-259-1775 or reach out to Andrea Nichols at andrea.nichols at tn.gov or call at 629-261-4088. An ESA participating student may voluntarily or involuntarily withdraw from the program anytime. Account holders must notify the department when a participating student withdraws from the school by completing the following items. <clears throat> First, the account holder should complete the ESA program's mandatory student withdrawal form. Please note that you must notify the department within five business days of a student's withdrawal. Next, Send the new verification of enrollment for the new participating school to esa.questions at tn.gov. If the student withdraws from the ESA program during the school year, the amount will be prorated to match the amount of time the student spent in the participating school. If an account holder should voluntarily or involuntarily withdraw the student from their category one, two, or three school, they must enroll in another category one, two, or three non-public school to maintain their ESA account. If an account holder should enroll their student in a public school, independent homeschool, or category four or five private school, the student would then be ineligible to participate in the program, would forfeit the remainder of their ESA funds, and the student's ESA would be closed. The student would remain eligible to reapply for the ESA program in the upcoming school year as a new participant. Families must submit an expense report within 10 business days of the withdrawal date to include all expenses covered through the ESA, regardless of future enrollment in a participating or non-participating ESA school. For the first two options, a new expense pre-approval form must be filled out and a copy of your new school contract must be sent to esa.questions at tn.gov. Student First Technologies has been selected as our vendor for our online ESA accounting and application platform going forward. More details and training materials will be coming soon to help account holders set up accounts for the 2023-24 school year. ESA fund disbursement will be quarterly for approved ESA students. As discussed in previous slides, all ESA funds must be pre-approved by account holders, 
we hope to have account holders submit all pre-approvals by the September 29, 2023 deadline to ensure accounts will be set up to make payments this fall. Allocations for each quarter funding will be as follows. Funds allocation for quarter one will be 50% disbursement. Quarter two funds will have a 20% disbursement. Quarter three, 20% disbursement. And quarter four will have a 10% disbursement. Once expense pre-approvals have been approved, the ESA funds will be paid to schools and providers through the e-wallet platform. As a participating ESA account holder, we need your help reporting fraud, waste, and abuse. If you know of anyone engaging in any activity that you consider to be wasteful, inefficient, or fraudulent, please report this activity to the Tennessee Comptroller's Office for Fraud, Waste, and Abuse at the website shown or call the ESA Fraud Hotline at 615-770-6813. Please see the ESA Finance Team's contact information. Feel free to contact us with any questions you may have. We are always happy to help you in any way possible. Additional helpful link, links can be found on our website at www.tn.gov slash education slash ESA. Our, web, our website also has an informational webinar for parents to learn more about ESA program eligibility, frequently asked questions for families, parent and school handbooks, and a pre-approval guidance video for reference. Also, if you are not receiving our monthly ESA newsletter, you can email esa.questions at tn.gov to get added to the distribution list. In our newsletters, the finance and outreach departments provide regular virtual office hours to assist schools and families. Please refer to our newsletters for dates, times, and virtual links. Thank you for your interest in the Tennessee Education Savings Account or ESA program.